This is Valley News Live at 10. Good evening, I am Nashe Taylor. Thank you for joining us. Two juveniles are in custody after a high speed chase spanning through several counties and covered more than 100 miles took place today on Interstate 29. In this video given to us by a viewer, you can see the white pickup truck speeding in the southbound lanes of I-29 and several police following behind. Authorities say the pursuit started in Pembina County where a deputy observed the speeding truck, which was reported stolen in Harwood. The deputy attempted to make a traffic stop, but the suspect fled through several counties before entering the Fargo metro area. Spike strips and another pursuit intervention technique was used. The pursuit came to a stop near exit 67, where you can see the officer surrounding the vehicle in a ditch off the side of the road. The two juveniles involved are facing charges of fleeing, reckless endangerment, theft of a motor vehicle and possession of stolen property. Meanwhile, in Grand Forks, a car chase ensued after police were responding to a vehicle theft on North Washington Street. Authorities were dispatched to the report of the theft around 6 a.m. this morning, and once the vehicle was located, a pursuit began. Officers later lost sight, but sometime down the line, they, the same vehicle was spotted, and another pursuit started on Gateway Drive. A 21-year-old driver was later apprehended in Grand Forks County. The pending charges include fleeing in a motor vehicle and theft of a motor vehicle. Grand Forks police were also led on another car chase a little after 5 a.m. this morning. Officers were responding to a report of a restraining order violation at the 600 block of 8th Avenue North. A pursuit later ensued and ended near 800, the 800 block of Cherry Street. Charges include violation of a disorderly conduct restraining order, DUI, DUI refusal, reckless endanger, and reckless driving and fleeing in a motor vehicle. Also, a vehicle was fully engulfed on the side of northbound I-29 just north of Fargo. Northbound traffic was backed up for some time. The North Dakota Highway Patrol and Harward fire crews were on the scene. Valley News Live will have more details on this fire as they become available. And Fargo police, the Fargo police and fire departments responded to a hit and run outside a Pizza Hut on 25th Street South. This video shows a pillar outside the restaurant being damaged by a car that took off after striking it. Crews came out to clear the broken glass and the ground on the ground outside the businesses. This is an ongoing investigation. A 15 year old has died after a rollover crash on Highway 11 near Lidger Wood. A shooting, a shooting at a mall near Fourth near Miami has left four people wounded. Police say there was a confrontation inside a store at the Aventura Mall this afternoon when one person pulled out a gun and opened fire. According to authorities, one person was shot. Three other people suffered injuries related to the shooting but were not wounded by a gunshot. Police say the gunman got away. And three people, including a child, were injured during a shooting in Times Square in New York City. Police are reporting that all three people shot in the busy area were innocent bystanders. NYPD investigators believe two to four men got into an argument during the dispute. At least one of them fired a gun. A four-year-old Brooklyn girl was wounded in the leg and is undergoing surgery at Bellevue Hospital. Also, a 23-year-old tourist from Rhode Island was also wounded. The third wounded person was a 43-year-old New Jersey woman who was hit in the foot. According to the Biden administration, about 57 percent of adults in America have received at least a first dose of vaccine. It's good news, but health experts are working hard to further increase those numbers and combat vaccine hesitancy. The fans are back. A shot in the arm for baseball and fans. Excited to hear like the noise. As stadiums like Truist Park outside Atlanta reopen to the public, ticket holders are getting more than just a seat. They can also get a vaccine. I wanted to get here as soon as possible when I saw that uh, it was going to be during uh, my favorite team's game. You know, it made it, made it, you know, definitely cool. A creative approach to increase vaccine distribution as the Biden administration marks two key milestones. 150 million Americans have received at least one shot. 110 million are fully vaccinated. 
But there are signs interest is waning. Some states that initially scrambled to get as many doses as possible now scaling back orders. In Orange County, California, this mass vaccination site shutting down because people aren't showing up. We think that more people who um, have not yet gotten their vaccine are either fearful or they just don't have time in their lives. The federal government dedicating $250 million to community organizations to help spread vaccine awareness, increase the number of appointments, and assist with transportation, pitching in to get the country closer to herd immunity. Sarah Dolliff, NBC News. A new analysis suggests the global death toll from COVID-19 may be double than what has been reported. Researchers compared actual number, the actual number of all deaths caused during the pandemic with the number of anticipated deaths from all causes based on the pre-pandemic trends. Based on that, they estimate that nearly 6.9 million people around the world had died from COVID-19. That is more than double than the 3. 2 million deaths reported by the World Health Organization. Sci scientists say the increased death toll may be a result of insufficient testing. And yesterday, the World Health Organization gave its authorization for emergency use of a COVID-19 vaccine manufactured by China's Sinopharm. It is the first vaccine developed by a non-Western country to get backing by WHO. The vaccine has already been given to millions of people in China and elsewhere. WHO officials said it had validated the safety, efficacy, and quality of the vaccine developed by the Beijing Institute of Biological Products who is recommending that the vaccine be administered in two doses to those age 18 and over. Meanwhile, Pope Francis today stressed the need for vaccine equity in a video message addressed to participants of the Global Citizen Fundraising Concert. In his message, the Pope asked for global nations to not forget the most vulnerable, arguing that, quote, a variant of this virus closed nationalism, which prevents, for example, an internationalism of vaccines. And if you're looking for a place to get the vaccine, use our VNL vaccine tracker. It's on the homepage of our website, or you can open your phone camera and point it at the QR code on your screen. Then link, then tap the link that pops up. Several people gathered at the Healing Garden outside the Broadway Sanford Medical Center to support Brady Monroe and his family. Valley News Team's Aaron Walling brings us the story. For nearly a month, 23-year-old Brady Monroe has been on a ventilator after contracting COVID. And friends and family gathered at the Healing Garden to show support for him and his family during these difficult times. He isn't awake at this time to be able to see this along. His dad is upstairs with him as well. And they would be overwhelmed with how many people showed up and that continued to support him and all of our benefits. Many people around the garden were ordained in Brady's strong shirts. What started off as a few turned into close to a thousand wanted by different communities. This opportunity today is really a, a boost for the family. And hope is a unifying force for the people that gathered for Brady. Brady's mother has a twin sister in Aunt Pam who is seeing the pain happening with the family. I, I try to stay strong. Um, I can go up to the room with her. I can see Brady, I can hold his hand. But when I'm done and I come down and I sit here and I kind of let it out at that time. Um, so she's going through a very, very hard time and I know she would do the same for me. Bree's Aunt Pam said it best. Her nephew has impacted a lot of people despite being in a small community. In Fargo, Aaron Walling, Valley News Live. Several fundraising efforts have been set up to help Brady and his family during these difficult times. Later on Valley News Live at 10, some restaurants across the country are testing out a vaccination bracelet. But first, summer has a look at your extended forecast coming up next. 